thanks a lot for coming out. We're Fugazi from Washington, D.C.
problem is, if you don't say anything, the people place your thing on you. They, they say who you are. But then, if you try to, like, stare at it all, then you start to feel like you're being, uh, well, at least it probably ended. Of course, like an issue of creating a false... premeditated. Mm-hmm. You're trying to you're steer people. It. Yeah, you're manipulating it. So... personal profiles. My name is Jamie Valdez and I will be your host for today. For this show we have two very talented guests, Ian Mackay and Guy Picciotto from Fugazi, a music group residing in Washington DC. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having us. What does Fugazi mean and how did you choose it? It's a slang word uh, that I, I found in a book about Vietnam, which means sort of a messed up situation in sort of simple terms. And uh, I just thought it was kind of a, a quite beautiful word, actually, and left sort of open to interpretation. first show in uh, September of 87, and uh, Guy was actually not with us then, he was in the audience, and mm-hmm. he, he was doing backing vocals by the next show, and sort of off stage. I got together with Ian, called me up one day, and I never really thought about it, you know, playing with Ian. You know, I had seen Myron Threat and everything, but I never, never really occurred to me. I, I was just really glad somebody serious about the music was approaching me. Although when he mentioned, you know, the kind of things he liked, and, uh, like this, this band, The Obsessed, that was from the D.C. area. He also liked, you know, James Brown and MC5, mm-hmm. Stooges, Reggae, and whatever. <laughs> expectations and throwing in like a spanner in the works or whatever and, and for me I mean I want this band to be I mean if this is unsettling people I'm ready to really unsettle people because I'm ready to you know I want the sound to always be moving and to be like I, anything starts getting static I start getting uncomfortable because I feel like like what happened with hardcore or whatever is that things get so ritualized they become they're no longer powerful they lose their power they're not dangerous anymore they don't they don't excite people and they don't move people anymore they just become some kind of a traditional thing which people can just you know, slip on the clothes and slip on an attitude, but for me, it's like, it's a life thing, man, and if it's going to be a life thing for me, it has to always constantly be moving forward and, like, have some kind of a time thing with dimension to it.
it's not only just for the audience's sake that, that we try to like, talk with them and confront them. It's for our sake. We don't want to feel like we're just playing to a bunch of, you know, like heads, you know, like, okay, there's some heads and some bodies out there, you know, and let's play and go home, you know. We want, because it's not worthwhile to me to be playing just the heads and bodies, because heads and bodies represent just consumers. And I don't want to have nothing to do with that. If they're there to be, you know, if I, I want to go play to people, and those people are there with me, and not like, and that way, if we can get into a thing where we respect each other as human beings, and the chances are that, you know, we're going to be taking care of each other in a little better sense, and, and then we can take it out in the streets from there, you know, but that's, but if it's just a thing where they come and play or pay their money, and there we are up there, and we're out here, that was a good show, let's go home, don't make no difference, you know, that's bullshit. Hand them up, come on, I'll go to the front of the show. <laughs> now is kind of based on what we learned in the hardcore scene of the early 80s. That was a time when like kids were taking control of their own affairs in terms of forming their own bands, setting up touring networks across the country, um, starting their own record labels, putting out their own fanzines. It was, it was basically kids creating a whole underground without the interest or blessing of the music industry. And it was motivated without any hope for profit. It was really just fueled by their own energy. contempt for the record industry and I don't particularly want to be a part of it any more than I have to um, the fact that I, that we started our own label is uh, is proof of that you know when you don't want to be a part of something you do it yourself so we did to exist uh, independent of the mainstream is a political it's a political feat in my opinion
messages do you want for your audience to hear? I mean, it's true that we address, like, political subjects or whatever in, in our lyrics, but I think that um, for about 30 years you've had so-called protest music and not a lot has changed, so I think we recognize the fact that if a band's going to act politically, that it has to be more in line with what they actually do as a band as opposed to what they say they do. So in terms of our politics, I think if you look at the kind of... Uh, like in the Washington area, we don't exclusively play benefit concerts, and if you look at the... Uh, causes that we, we, we uh, lend our support to in the Washington area, you could probably get an idea of the politics of the band. I mean, we've done a lot of concerts uh, supporting the Washington Free Clinic, the uh, Women Walker AIDS Clinic, um, like protests against Operation Desert Storm, which we brought a video of and stuff like that. So I understand that you do have a clip for us today. We're going to go watch the clip now. I don't know if the U.S. Park Police are filming us for our new MTV special, I guess. according to the band Fugazi. First, own your own record label. Avoid greed. Charge only $8 for CDs and $5 at the door. Book your own shows and do not sell merchandise. That's right, no t-shirts. And do not make music videos. Result? Fugazi outsells and outdraws many major label bands and they get respect. According to Fugazi, never mind what you're buying, it's what you're selling. <laughs> This is Ian. If it seems like people always focus on your ethical stance more than they do the music. If you ask me, like, what, do, what is Fugazi about? I'd say Fugazi is about being a band. The nature of the music business is to make money, um, which is fine, because a lot of people, that's, what, that's their art. Their art is making money or hyping things, or that's what they do for a living, and they're really good at it. And it's almost even respectable in a way of how good they are at it. If they can suddenly create something and immediately make a million people buy it. That's pretty amazing, you know. Um, but that's nothing to do with us. That's just a different thing altogether. Again, our concern is to be a band and to play. And then we realize if we play, that people want to come see us. So we try to engineer it so people can see us in a way that everyone's comfortable. And mostly, primarily, that we're comfortable with. <laughs> about the way the band works live is that we always improvise the sets. We never use a set list, so it's never scripted. So like at any moment, everyone in the band has to be ready to go into any one of the 70 or 80 songs that we've written over the years. It's really important that you almost enter kind of a group mind or something so that you're able to pick up on cues from each other, which could be like a body motion or a move on a guitar or just eye contact. 
And from that, you have to know where to go, what parts to extend, how to segue into the next song, what the next song is going to be. On nights where it doesn't work, it can really be a disaster. But on nights where it's really clicking, it's almost like we're reading each other's minds and it just flows. Here we are living the 
even know. Yeah, man, it's possible. Right, so we did eat the rice. It's possible that we are everything we are. <laughs> At some point, I don't know, I mean, the work kind of has to speak for itself in a lot of ways. You know, it's just like... So the second, after the E, then goes back to the E. It goes E, B, B, E. substantial as it should be, but I, I don't know if that, because I, all of a sudden everybody splits away from doing, like when during the C parts, everybody's hitting a C, two, one, or whatever, and then everybody splits apart, and that sounds more like, my God. Slogan, America is just a word, but I use it. Could you please elaborate? Um, it's a song. It's a song about. Um, it's a complicated song. But that line is, is about how uh, words and, and your language you use sort of ultimately locks you into a certain uh, place. You don't have much freedom outside of that particular language. And America, uh, in an essence, is just is just an idea. I mean, it's just it's just a word. And um, what it actually means, it's left to each person to sort of uh, figure out for themselves.
five years ago, we were driving to Florida, we stopped at a rest area, and they had these uh, little trinkets for sale, and one of them was this sort of monkey carved out of a coconut. Have you ever seen these things before? Well, Brendan bought one, and ever since then, we've been having terrible, terrible luck. Shows have been canceled, people have been getting sick, things have been breaking. Today we came in here and only half the PA came in. So we smashed that damn monkey. We smashed the monkey. And from here on out, take this side up, ladies and gentlemen. From here on out, have a nice time. Hey, don't fucking kick people and don't punch people. I'm talking to you right there, all right? I'm talking to you and you. You want to fucking do that shit? Get the fuck up on the football field, all right? I'm talking to you. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Yeah, that's right. Now, I don't have, it sucks to have to tell people to behave themselves, but there's other people here too, all right? So try to be a little more kind. So, yeah. You know, I saw you two guys earlier at the Good Humor truck. And you were eating your ice cream like little boys. And I thought, those guys aren't so tough. They're eating ice cream. What a bunch of swell guys. I saw you eating ice cream, pal. Oh, don't you deny it. You were eating an ice cream cone. You were eating an ice cream cone. Oh, you're bad now. You're bad now, but you're eating an ice cream cone. And I saw you. That's the shit you can't hide, you know. You got your fucking shit, but you eat ice cream. Everybody knows it. The whole fucking place knows it. Ice cream eating motherfucker. That's what you are.
so you might take this opportunity to suss out a slow dance partner. <laughs>
The way you guys approach songs, you know, the guitars in the moment, da -da 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 -da, and drop up completely, come tinkle in. Ba -da -ba -da -da. Yeah. <laughs> sort of like, sort of like swinging, sort of like swinging, swinging your body over a cliff. You know, while you're, while you're over the cliff, sort of slow down a little bit, just to create the excitement, and you yank it back in. I'm a failure, not your failure now. Take it back. Take it back. I doubled it, right? Mm -hmm. The first time I do the really quiet guitar, I'm spot on. The second one's a little off. I, don't, I have no problem either way, but I just want to make sure you knew. The it's a little heavier, like... It creates this really woody sound, man. It sounds like a fucking classical instrument. It's really cool. Actually, this is the only thing that sounds weird. Yeah. With live shows, the uh, communication lines are very distinct. I mean, you've got an audience there, like a reciprocating energy that you can feed off of. And it's not something you have in the studio. In the studio, it's much more sterile, much more laboratory-like conditions, and you're trying to almost hypnotize yourself, find some way to like approximate that, that rebounding energy. Stuff. It's not on on the other on the other times I've done it, I've, or either with the other guitar or whatever. You can you hear a pure like dee -dee 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 -dee. this time it just fudged entirely. <laughs>
You're the Danny K of hip hop. You're the Buddy Hackett of Wow. You're the Buddy Epson of the Cocktail Nation. You're the George, George Burns of Trance.
say like well you should have an explanation you know you should have an explanation about your songs explain your songs it's like the lyrics are printed you know what more do you need you know that's I mean, everything we've done stage. yeah the story is like yeah we present the story on stage when we play it's still like the challenge is there you know can we like throw down can we return the favor because so many bands have blown our minds over the years can we can we return that favor to people out there and that that's still something that feels very straight up to me it just seems like, it's like, I don't really, oh yeah.
that what we do exists within a context that, that we control and that is people are invited to participate in but not forced to participate in and not forced to have people mouthing off every goddamn 10 minutes about like, you know, you know what trauma it is to be a star or, or, or how incredibly great our new record is or what the lyrics all exactly mean. I mean... Gazi has probably played eight or nine hundred shows now, and that includes 35 different countries and every state in the United States, some of those five or six times. This is natural. So, <laughs> no, just I just started just telling this story. <clears throat> Let's go over here. So about a week ago, I had this dream. We we're hanging out with Iggy Pop. Yeah. He's riding in the band with us. I start over. Too subtle. You can tell it down here. Good job. Do a good job. Just look at the camera. From the top. Go, Iggy Pop. Dream. Take one. Take two. Got her. You can, you can film me all night.
troubled sea, when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. I'm going to leave it on. And they were both naked, and they were not ashamed. happened around the early 1990s, the industry saw a market in agitated guitar music or punk rock or whatever you want to call it, and an enormous amount of money and attention kind of descended on the scene. It's a lot harder, I think, now for, for people to be able to avoid that kind of cultural carpeting or whatever. It's hard to see things without having seen them through the eyes of that industry, and that really affects people's response to it. We're gonna stop the fucking show every fucking time and ask you guys to stop, so. We've never seen anything like that crazy, crazy dancing before. Actually, it's just boring as shit, so come on. Let's everyone have a nice time. Everybody, please. Hey, why don't we get someone to look at this guy's head to split open? 
Tickets are $550 each. Oh my God. That's a ripoff. That's four grand. Who's paying for it, though? Huh? We are, right? To a degree? We are, period. You're no longer sitting at home waiting for moments to come to you. You're out and you're going to the moment.
three, Osaka, Kyoto, Nagoya, Tokyo, Perth, Adelaide, Melbourne, Canberra, Wollongong, Lismore, Byron Bay, Sydney, Tasmania, Hobart, Christchurch, Dunedin, Hawaii. Oh, 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 
right there. You can turn now. Seems like it's standing right the fuck in front of me. Okay, I mean, do you think that the band is real different from other bands? Well, I thought, I thought you yeah, no way. Yes, every band is different from other bands. Well, I mean, what do they mean to you? What do they mean to me? Oh, they don't mean anything. They're just music. It's something I like to listen to. Because they have such a tight press type thing, you know, selective interviewing, things like that. You don't get to know them as much through uh, interviews or whatnot, so you got to take them at face value of the music. Yes, I don't know. It's just what all I can do. Just listen to teams. That's one of the reasons why I love coming to the concerts. The reason I like you guys is because every other band, especially punk bands, are mostly like so violent that it's going to turn on itself. It's because it's not like that at all. Um, I think Red Medicine sucked because it was just a vast departure from their earlier albums. Do you, do you read their lyrics? Or? Oh, God, yes. We know their lyrics. We fell in love analyzing the lyrics to Margin Walker, okay? Yeah. That, that was, is how our relationship began. We're married. You said yeah. we've been married for years. We've been and, uh, for five years. Yeah. So we fell in love with them and we started dating. It was, it was Fugazi. And we sat in my room and we analyzed like Margin Walker and we talked about Touch Your Hand at the Wall at Night. I just really haven't, I mean, I've heard like a few of their songs, you know, it's just not a band that I'm really into, just so I don't have any of their albums, you know, like what I've heard I like, you know, obviously I wouldn't be, you know, I wouldn't pay for a band that I thought sucked, but it's just not something I'm really into. I can't believe we're easy to Well, I heard about Fugazi on NPR about a year and a half ago, and uh, I liked it and thought the rest of the family would like it, heard they were coming and thought we'd come. I mean, we like the old stuff better than the new stuff. You like the old stuff better than the new stuff. How come? I, I it just sounds better. The older stuff is so much more punk. How about that, Buckaroo? <laughs> is that your name, Buckaroo? <laughs> yeah, tell me, what does punk mean? Punk means just fucking going out, don't give a shit about nothing, and just having fun. Playing good music, man. That's all there is to it. Well, is that is that a good description of what Fugazi's lyrics are all about? Fugazi's all about, I mean, uh, Ian McKay, you know, Black Flag, right. Minor Threat, Fugazi. You can't fuck with a motherfucker like that. Inspired me? No, I don't think they inspired me. Not politically or anything, but musically, I, I find them an inspiration. But I saw it today, you know, I thought it was good. <laughs> What's your t-shirt? A t-shirt? No, I don't really know. My, my uh, mom bought it for me, so. Uh, basically, I saw you saw a hard vibe is uh, waiting on The music really inspired me to sort of be like more honest and more like intense about how I feel about things. It's just more mainstream. More like, let's see who, how many people will buy our album because we're going to conform to what they want to See, I don't believe that. That's bullshit because they pretty much say the same except for their music got faster. Yeah, dude, they still sound the same. Their music just got faster. They never went, you guys, they did not go mainstream. No, that's it's, bullshit. it's more mainstream that's, than what they no, used to. No, that's yes, such it bullshit. Is. It's only mainstream now because more people listen to it as they put on the goddamn radio. They never change their music. They go faster now than they used to, but that doesn't mean they, that's just bullshit. I just think he's like full of it. I just think he thinks that he's like some big rock star and stuff. But I think it's cool how they, he doesn't give in to big business and how he started his own company, um, I believe record company to do things his way and stuff and not to sell out to big business and the corruption that goes along with it. I know that's good. It's free and I live right over there. So like, you know, I could sit at home and do nothing or I could come out here. I like it a lot. Um, it's got a lot of energy, but it's not, it's like kind of controlled energy, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's not just it's, madness. Uh, yeah, it's, it's real tight. I like it. I think, I used to like them, but I think they suck now. Just, I hate that they say no dancing, blah, 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 that fucking PC shit. I hate that shit. I mean, it is hardcore, or at least that's what they were at first, not the top. That's what it was. And you dance at hardcore shows and you fucking have fun go off and shit, but they ain't gonna say you can't do that shit. What the fuck? What the hell? Is, they're there they're to entertain me, provide me entertainment. So why are they gonna get up on stage unless they want me to have a good time? They've definitely inspired me to like start playing the guitar and 
just trying to start bands. Tonight's benefit happens to be for Emmaus Services for the Aging, which is a, a small neighborhood organization that works with isolated, low-income elderly here in the inner city. They're not about show business, they're not about money, they're not about hype, they're about music and ideas. <laughs> his business and then his partner is this woman with the brown hair who I never met and then there was the owner of the room the old fucking guy and so like James is going like well I feel really bad yeah you did tell me I, I you know you were right you did tell me Thank you. 
The thing is, it's it's like this thing. It's a, it's like a, a a moment. It's like it's like a, a, a full release. And I, I mean, I can't for for me um, playing, performing or playing is is as close to I've ever to, to as close to being free as I've ever felt in my life. It is by far the most um, extreme like kind of feeling I've ever had. And incredibly satisfying and addictive and you can't stop doing it
Thank you. 